Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and I have a surprise, something that you might not be expecting, which is kind of the same thing as last week. That's right, I had been wanting to do the revisit of the tape emulation in a particular kind of way. I like making stuff where it's pretty simple, like you can see in this interface, there's one control, it is slam, and there's nothing else. Um, my take on that is that for some of these things, there's a purpose to simplifying them and having them not be overcomplicated. And in so doing, I revisited it to the point where this is not the same plugin as the one from last week with just controls taken off or set to presets. No, this is something that's a little subtly different and you might just like it. Here is a piece of music. It's not exactly the same music as many times before, but you probably heard it before. And I can turn on the tape. And I can turn it off. So this is a pretty subtle effect, but it doesn't have to be because the thing about Air Windows tape is that you can push it and push it to the point of ridiculous. So the whole idea of this is to give you a thing that you can mix to where it's not wildly changing the result. Like uh, this is sounding the way that it was mixed, but then if I throw this on, we have some sort of tonal character differences, but it's not doing a wild EQ change here. And I can demonstrate that in an interesting way because the way that I designed this one was dialing it in to the point where you could do multiple generations of it and it would survive. How many generations? This many generations. So when you put well, here, tell you what, let me cut them. When we put this onto our tape, it starts to sound kind of messed up as follows. So now let's let things get rolling, because you don't normally do slamming the tape through eight generations of slam. But if it's loud, you get this. taking these away one by one. There's five. There's four. So try this with anybody else's tape simulation, I beg of you. Here's three. Two. one instance, 
lastly, no instances. So why have I done this? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is you'll see that it is uh, marked just tape. It's a sort of conceptual simpleness of the concept of the sort of thing where you could reach for this if that was basically all you were trying to do. The slam control doesn't work exactly the same as a just running gain into it. It's more like if you have the uh, inside of the tape machine and there's an internal gain in there and you get to turn that up and sort of get a sort of more resonant sort of intense mid-range. Basically what I'm trying to say is it's using that internal unbox thing which restricts uh, aliasing subtly and slam is increasing the gain within the unbox calculation so if you back it off you'll still have some of the head bump fullness and you'll have a cleaner sound but you'll also have just a hair more extreme lows and highs around the outside edge and then if you're pushing slam beyond zero what you're going to get is sort of that more mid-rangey warmness kind of thing and you will also get more punch rather than just sort of low frequency thunder but as you can hear if you crank it up and throw on multiple instances, you get an enormous amount of low frequency thunder, which is what you might get if you were just repeatedly dubbing tapes hot into each other for like eight instances, all of which were good and loud. And yeah, the idea is this is just something that you can do without fiddling. This is something that you can do without needing to find the right setting for the soften or this or that. Instead, I dialed it in using multiple instances to get what I'm used to hearing back in the days when all I had to work with was actual real tape and dubbing it repeated times and the degrading quality of that. There's also something that people were objecting to in 2Tape6, which I think is not going to be as much of a case. I believe that people's comments about soundstage diminishing is partly because the flutter was happening. And the flutter is not part of this one because that's more of a special effects thing. On 2Tape6, it defaults to 0 0.5. But on this one, since this is not so much a special effects thing, but just something that you could naturally put on a mix, like on your two bus before going to the output stage. In fact, you can use it as your safety clipper because it also contains, besides its own distortion and overload, it also contains that instance of a simplified AD clip on the output, catching any transients that might be sneaking past the tape quality this can be your sort of loudness catcher and tape is known to be a very effective way of doing that so this is my effort to make that something possible something that you can just reach for and you don't have to fiddle with and if you want to get not exactly the same thing because again everything is slightly tweaked and everything is slightly adjusted the code is not the same but if you want to get something where you can do basically the same fundamental thing but have a lot wider realm of adjustment. You should be going for a two tape six and enjoy all the controls. But if you want to just get stuff done and get this particular sound on your mix, this is the one that I'm doing for you. It is not the last thing that I'm doing. I have many things that I'm fooling with. For instance, I have to learn how to use this little box. You might not know what it is. These are to run um, Eurorack stuff in. I'm going to be running Eurorack triggers into this. People might not know what it is, but one person out there let me buy this from him and uh, we'll be enjoying the results. I'm also working on a, uh, a Eurorack thing that I'm building. I've glued these together and I'm going to be making a nice little mahogany faceplate so that I can do a more complicated version of this, which is a way of running 
different uh, an envelope output on my kick drum into some various things like VCAs and such. Because one of the things that you can do if you have some of your stuff built up is if you run a VCA, an envelope output into a VCA or VCF through a capacitor, you get only the initial spike and then the rest of it goes away. So you get to do a multi-stage envelope. And this added to it with the little switch is basically just running to ground. So what this does is you um, run the envelope to the VCA or the VCF. And if you flip the switch and engage this to ground, what you're doing is you're slowing down the attack because you're running a low pass filter on the, well, this is, this is just the stuff that I do for fun. And here's another one over here. I'm not sure whether this is actually going to work. I've showed people examples of this. The reason I'm not sure this is going to work is because I think I need to have individual devices for each digit. But the idea is to make a very slow, this is a clock, a very slow speed uh, gate generator where I can keep track of like this one little instance on this device and have it give me a voltage that's going to vary depending upon what digit of the clock is lit up. And I made a chart for reading that, put it this way, I'm keeping busy. Like here's, here's my little note for what I'm going to do with these. But, uh, and also I got to mention um, before I go that, you know, if I, if there's a week that I don't post a plugin and you're a patron, then check the Patreon or check your email or something, because I'm thinking about posting things like maybe getting evergreens back again. And if I don't have a plugin ready some week, because some of these I have to dig in, like there's a lot of work to be done for what this box is. But, uh, if I don't have a plugin ready on a given week, it's possible that what I'll do is I'll put together an Evergreens and then you can have something that week. So if you don't see me, then stuff might be happening behind the scenes that you may very well end up appreciating or enjoying in future. For now, however, I hope you like this new post. I mean, granted, it's very similar to what I just posted last week. I just posted two tape six. People really like two tape six. The last thing you expected to see was another tape emulation, exactly the same area as two tape six, but with subtle little changes in several of the parts of the code and next to no controls. But I wanted to do the version of the tape emulation that was less about tweaking every little thing and more about having just a general purpose, like some of the tape qualities, like giving a little bloom from the head bump and uh, softening highs in a particular way, but in such a way that you can just throw it on and work with it, that it's not a matter of like, well, how do I adjust the soften to balance that against the other thing? Instead, you've just got the, uh, instead you've just got the slam control and that's more or less kind of voicing and boosting the plugin inside it. Again, technically all that's doing is giving you a different amount of boost on the internal air windows, um, unbox algorithm where it's resisting aliasing in a distortion stage. Oh, it's a different distortion stage as well to tape six is using Mojo and this one is using spiral for added cleanness and better sound stage and that kind of stuff where it's, I, I like it when things work the way that I hoped. I like it when people are really impressed, but I hear it when people are like, oh, this is really colorful, but I lost sound stage. Like, yeah, with a bit of luck, this is going to be a lot better in that regard. I certainly did my level best to try to see that it was that, and I'm pretty sure that it was the, um, the flutter algorithm that was doing that. But if it was also the Mojo algorithm, that's changed too. 
And, you know, if it had something to do with the uh, head bump and the way that the head bump resists DC stuff, uh, well, I tweaked that. Is, I tweaked everything. Okay, I tweaked everything. I hope you like the new tape. That's all it is, is tape. And presumably I'm going to be fine with that. I'm not stepping on anybody else's name because it really can't get much simpler. And I'm going to see whether I can't bring in some other things that have a similar level of simpleness. For instance, I have that monitoring plugin that has one control and it just does monitoring and it is a good post tape thing. And I'm going to see what I can get together as far as, but that would be telling. But stay tuned. If you like this kind of stuff, then please support the Patreon. I've been, I've been working up an idea where I can get stuff like all of this merry nonsense together and give people more of an ability to play with, say, hardware if they want by putting together a system where if I get beyond a certain amount, which would probably be $2,000, so don't worry about it happening right away uh, per month, anything that I get beyond that gets spent on hardware parts bought in bulk that I will sell at cost to patrons. So that just sort of funds a... Because people can't necessarily buy stuff in bulk and get those prices, but if I can, I can pass that on. And I can put together little kits of like chips and things that you can play with and you can get interested in doing that as well. I'm not expecting that there will be lots of people doing that, but it'll start out at very small scale anyway. So that's just something more that I can do if things keep expanding. For now, I hope you like tape. I don't know whether that's going to be right up your alley. Maybe two tape six is more close to what you like or need. Or maybe you're the kind of person who, like me, would like to come up with something where it's like, I know the sound of this, I've learned how to mix into it, and it gets me the results that I want. That's why I made tape. That's why I didn't stick with just to tape six and adjust it to taste. It's like, no, no, no. I grew up working with pieces of equipment, and I have instruments and gear and stuff that are pieces of equipment where part of my using it like a musical instrument is learning the voice of this particular thing. Not everything can be malleable. Not everything can be everything at once. It's useful to have a known system where it's doing the stuff that you want and you can get familiar with the tone quality of the thing. What also helps with this is that if you like, for instance, tape and want to get used to it, um, my track record has been the stuff that's been coming out for uh, Patreon. If I come up with something else, I don't change the thing out from under you. I come up with a new thing and let you have it. So the stuff that I make can be counted upon over the long haul. And I think that's important. On that note, I can probably close uh, this window over here. Let's go with me as I closed out my little tape window. And I have been Chris from Air Windows. I don't know if you were specifically asking for yet another tape emulation, which is similar to, but not exactly the same as the previous tape emulation, but without controls. But that's what I wanted to do. And this will have an effect on stuff like when I come out with a, say, Tape Echo plugin, which isn't happening next week, I don't think. But it's on the agenda. There's a bunch of stuff that's on the agenda. And it should make 2020 fun to get into as far as doing my work and presenting you folks with the plugins that you like. And I hope you do like them. Thanks. Talk to you later.